Okay, uh, you know, we're uh, real pleased to uh, have a quality win uh, against, uh, uh, you know, a good Kentucky team. Uh, just the helmet stickers that we gave out tonight offensively, uh, Seth Williams got our helmet sticker. He had two touchdown catches that were both really good catches. He played very well without the ball, and, and he played with uh, – a lot of physicality, which we've been really, you know, asking him to do. Defensively, uh, our helmet sticker went to Roger McCreary. Uh, obviously, the the hundred yard uh, return for a touchdown that got called back uh, right there before half, and then in the fourth quarter he had a, a cause fumble and we recovered. It. it was a big play in the game. Special teams uh, helmet sticker was Jordan Peters. Uh, he made the tackle on the uh, the fake punt, which is very critical. Uh, in the game, and he played very well in all phases, uh, special teams, and, and made a tackle on punt too. And you really, after watching the game, uh, there's a lot of areas to improve on. But the one thing that stood out to me is our guys played extremely hard. Uh, they played for 60 minutes, and that was really the difference in the game that uh, helped us win. Questions? Questions from Jason Caldwell. <clears throat> Gus, you talked about depth, how important the depth was going to be this year. And you were without a couple of defensive linemen. I, I didn't, DeAndre Butler didn't play. Tay Hardy didn't dress. You, you're down a bunch of guys. Let's talk about having to dig deep on the defensive line and what you saw out of those guys. Yeah, you're exactly right. And then, of course, Big Cat just played a couple of plays in the second half and, and not having, you know, Jay, which Jay had a, a good fall camp and, and got, uh, got injured last week, um, you know, and so – um, Dre Butler, you know, is, is nursing injury. We're hoping we get those guys back here pretty quick. But the good thing is that a lot of guys got a chance to play, and uh, it was good to see, you know, the, the guys out there. And we're, we're always talking about developing depth, and we got a chance to do that Saturday. Next is Tom Green. Hey, Gus, I wanted to ask you about that two-point conversion. I think that's the first time that you've run that. Uh, since the opener against Washington State in 2013. Just what went into the decision to go with that there? You know, um, well, first of all, really it was, I mean, we did do it in 2013. It was a different version, but uh, we actually ran that play after the first touchdown of the year against Washington, and uh, we just didn't execute it. It was there. We just didn't execute it, and it's a, it's a tough play to, to defend if, if someone hadn't worked on it, and our guys really executed it well, and uh, you know, we'll be able to expand, you know, those type of things now in the future. Next is Jordan Hill. Gus, Owen played really well yesterday. Just how much growth have you seen from him since he first got here? Yeah, you know, he really does the same thing on defense as Bo has done on offense. You know, he's just more comfortable. He understands what's going on. And, you know, he's a very good player. And, uh, you know, he's a very good special teams player too. So he's just really raising his level. Next is Justin Ferguson. I guess I noticed yesterday during the game that Bo spread the ball pretty much to all levels of the field, all different sides of the field. Was that kind of the plan going in, and how pleased were you with the way he 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 you know moved it around last uh, yesterday? Yeah. yeah, I was real pleased, and uh, he made a couple really tough throws on his back foot, and um, you know I thought you know he protected the football, and that was that was the main thing, and you know I think you're exactly right. You know we had some short ones, some deep ones, and some medium ones, and, and he spread the field and, and got it to a lot of different guys, which is always helpful. Next, Josh Vitale. Yes, uh, I know you guys rotated a lot in the offensive line against Kentucky. Is is there a group, uh, after looking back in the film, that stands out that you want to go forward with, or are you still kind of in the decision-making progress? Yeah. Program? Well, for, first of all, we got some good information. Um, you know, with all seven guys that, that we played, um, you know, that'll help us kind of putting the pieces of the puzzle. But here's the positive is all those guys got a chance to play during prime time against a, a good defensive front and a good defensive front seven. So, like I said, gave us a lot of information. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we're still working on putting the pieces to the puzzle together. Next is Steve Moulton. All right, we'll move ahead to David Pascal. Hey, Gus, you've got the unique unique challenge this week of, of facing a team that started one quarterback yesterday, uh, put in another, and then has a quarterback who still hadn't been cleared medically. 
how 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 is that challenge going to be with the potential of three different quarterbacks you may see this week? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, each quarterback's probably a little bit different, um, you know, but they they played one game with a new offense coordinator, so we'll we'll see. But you know, it's kind of like playing a first game like yesterday. You know, we're just going to have to adjust and uh, and be be ready to to make changes if needed as the game goes on. And follow on Jay Hardy. Will, will he be possibly back this week, or will it be a few weeks before he comes back? Uh, we're, we're hopeful for everybody at this point. Now, we'll, we'll see, but uh, we're hopeful that we'll have everybody back. Um, you know, Shedrick Jackson didn't play. Marco Damio didn't play. So there was a lot of guys that, that, that didn't get a chance to play that we're hopeful this week. Thank you. We'll go back to Steve Moulton. Yes, Coach. I was hoping you could speak to uh, communication on the field, both offensively and defensively. Were you pleased with uh, things communicated the right way out on the field? Yeah, you, you know, um, I mean, there's going to be room for improvement after every first game, and but I thought for the most part it was pretty smooth, um, and uh, we'll have a chance to improve, you know, each game in that area too. In, in terms of um, – uh, submitting calls to Birmingham and especially the targeting call. Uh, was it a little bit more than usual or you tell me, Coach? You talking about that specific play or are you talking about overall? Calls submitting to uh, Birmingham, but yes, I am wanting to get a comment on the targeting call. Yeah, I mean, it was it was a boom, boom deal, you know, so that's, that's what they called. You know, as far as sending in plays, I think most – most coaches probably do each week if they've got some things they want to get some clarification um, on a specific rule. Next is Brian Matthews. Hi, Coach. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, you mentioned um, Shedrick Jackson. Is he a little banged up? And also wanted to ask you about Brandon Fa Fraser and how he's doing. Yeah. Uh, you know, Shedrick, we're hoping, is back uh, this week. Brandon Fraser is coming on and uh, improving. We we, we feel the same way we did before. I mean, he's going to have a chance to, to be a really good player, we feel like. Was he back up Mike and Griffith? out there uh, Saturday? Yes, he was. Next is Mike Griffith. Coach, I want to ask you about Pat Dye, just the uh, legacy that Coach Dye left at Auburn. What does that legacy mean to you? And when you think about Coach Dye, what comes to mind first? Well, yeah, wow. Um, that, that's a... That's a question that, you know, a lot of thought goes into, you know, you're talking about a guy that helped us, our program get to where it's at. Um, a guy that, you know, I got to know really good when I was the coordinator here. And then of course, being the head coach, he'd come just about every practice and got to know our players extremely well. And, uh, you know, gave me wisdom, you know, from time to time that, that was very helpful. So, uh, you know, we just want to honor his legacy uh, this whole season by playing good, hard nosed, Auburn football and play for 60 minutes and I really felt like he would have been proud yesterday you know we didn't play our best in some areas and but our guys they played their guts out and they played for each other they played for Auburn and uh and, and played physical so um you know we're honoring him this uh this season and I know our players are very excited to do that next is Gianna Hahn I guess. So you had a number of um, fr true freshmen play yesterday. Could you just evaluate how you think they did in their first college game? Well, you know, the first college game is always a unique experience for freshmen. There's nothing like getting in there and getting your feet wet. And now they've got a perspective and understanding like, oh, this is, this is what it's like. And the good thing for us is we played a very, very quality team uh, that was very well coached. So, uh, they, you know, they got a chance to – to get out there and, and do their thing. And I think for the most part, all the freshmen that played, I think they did some good things. And so my experience is those guys that, uh, you know, weren't completely overwhelmed, uh, they'll get better each game. And I really didn't see anybody really overwhelmed. Next is Mark Murphy. I want to ask about uh, Mark Anthony Richards. Did he play on special teams? And uh, how about Jaron Handy? Is he going to be available this week? Yeah, yeah, Handy played some. Uh, as far as Mark Anthony, I know he's in the mix of all the special teams. I can't remember if he actually got in, but he you'll see Mark, uh, you know, throughout the year. We think he's an outstanding player. And um, and like I said, Handy got a chance to play, you know, some snaps yesterday. Thanks. Next is Nathan King. 
Hey, Gus, so you talked a lot in the preseason about the freshman tight ends. We saw J.J. Pegues out there a lot. What did you kind of evaluate from his first game, everything he was able to do differently for you guys on offense and special teams? Yeah, he's he's a talented guy. There's no doubt. Uh, he can do a lot of different things well. He, he's one of those guys that just needs experience. It was really good for him, and I think he really performed well. Um, and uh, he's he's got uh, he's got a skill set that's very unique. He can run. He's got really good hands, and you know he's a big big guy too. All right, we got time for two more. Uh, next is Tom Green. Hey Gus, Smoke, and I think a couple of the other players said they really liked your outfit yesterday, and they hope that you keep wearing it. Um, should we expect to see that next week or in the future, especially since you guys won with it? You know, I hadn't really got that far. Um, Probably towards the end of the week, I'll uh, I'll decide, but uh, we'll we'll see. And then last one is from Justin Ferguson. I guess I want to ask you about Xavion Capers. He got into the game and and got had that big third down catch and uh, seemed to play a good bit. Uh, what did you see out of him? What do you like about what he brings to your, you guys at receiver? Uh, he he uh, you know Shedrick was was down, so he got uh, you know a chance to go out there and play in prime time. We thought he did some very good things, and you know Kalen Newton also played that position some, and I think it was good for him to get out there and get his feet wet too. So um, you know Coach Burns, uh, you know he has a lot of different options at wide receiver, and really doing a good job of developing that depth. All right, Coach, thank you very much. Hey, thank you.